Hey fellow developers, welcome to the tutorial on how to add a ping system in your game, similar to the ones used in popular battle royale games, like Apex Legends. Once done with this tutorial, you will have a fully functional ping system like this one in your game. The FPS asset I am using for this tutorial is Low Poly Shooter Pack. The link for this asset is available in the description below. It is one of my favorite assets for making FPS games with smooth animations and beautiful graphics. Let's get started. I have the required images already added to my project. We will need images for ping menu backgrounds, images for cursor and highlight. We will also need images for ping menu items and an image for the in-game ping object. Start by creating a new UI canvas called Menus. Set up the scaling mode of the canvas. Inside this, make an empty object for the ping menu. Inside the ping menu, the first thing we need is the background. This will be two circle images, the outer one for ping items, and inner one for cursor. Next add an empty object at the center of the menu as a pivot for cursor. Make sure that the rotation for this object is zero, and it is at the center of the ping menu. Inside this empty object, add the cursor image at the edge of the inner circle. When the pivot object has rotation zero, we want the cursor to point right at the first item above the horizontal line. Since my ping wheel will have eight items, the cursor image and the highlight images are both one eighth of a circle. Similarly, create another empty object at the center and place the highlight image inside it pointing to the right at the first item above the horizontal line. Later we will code the cursor to move based on mouse movement and the highlight image to select the ping item towards which the cursor is pointing. Now, add all the ping item images at their locations on the outer circle, scale and position them as required. At the center, add a text field to display details of currently selected item. And that's it for ping menu graphics. In your scene, create an empty object for the in-game ping object. Inside this empty object, create another empty object, which will contain all the images, and will later be scaled based on player distance. Add all the images as sprites to this scaled object, we will need the background, and ping item images. We will also need a text mesh to show the distance of player from the ping. If we run our game we can see our ping object placed in our game, however it is not visible through walls, and it does not rotate towards player. To display the ping through walls we will need to add a new camera inside our first person camera which will only be able to see the ping layer and display it above everything. To do this, create a new layer called ping. Move the ping objects in our scene to this new layer. Next create a new camera as a child of the first person camera. First change the clear flags of the new camera to depth only. Change the culling mask to nothing but the ping object. Match the rest of the settings of the new camera to exactly those of the FPS camera. Since the field of view of my main camera is changed on runtime, I am quickly going to add a script to match the field of view of the ping camera to that of main camera. Finally make sure that the depth of the ping camera is higher than that of the FPS camera, this way the ping object will be displayed on top of everything else. And now, when we run the game, the ping can be seen through walls. Next, let's add a script to the ping object, so that it is always facing the player, and has a uniform scale at any distance. In the script, we will need variables for scaling factor, minimum distance to start scaling up the ping, the player target reference variable, and the reference for the text which will display the distance. In the update function, 
simply call the look at function to make the ping object face the player target. Next calculate the distance from the player and show the distance in the text field on the ping. Finally, we can set the scale of our ping object using this formula. Back to Unity, set the required variables. And let's test our code, and make any required adjustments. We will need to rotate our text since it is facing backwards. Also, adjust the scale factor so that the size of the ping is neither too small nor too large. And now our ping object looks, just as we want it to. Next, let's add code to our ping will menu, so that we can change our ping item and location. Add a new script to the menu canvas. Inside the script, add reference variable for the ping menu, cursor object, and the highlight object. In the update function, when mouse wheel is pressed activate the ping menu, and when it is released deactivate the ping menu. Next, when our mouse wheel is pressed, and ping menu is active, we will need to check how much the mouse moved in the last frame. Depending on your input logic you can get mouse movement by using input.mouseposition and subtract this from last mouse position which you stored in a variable. You can also get mouse movement from your input horizontal and vertical axis. In the current project, I can get the mouse movement from the player character input. Using this value, I can calculate the angle or direction the mouse moved in, and the distance of the move. And now using move towards angle function, I can smoothly rotate my cursor along Z-axis to make it rotate based on mouse movements. Back to Unity, assign all the variables, and test the code. And there we go, the cursor is perfectly rotating. Next, let's rotate the highlight image to the selected object. Since we have 8 items over 360 degrees, each item takes 45 degrees. Using this information, we can divide the angle of the cursor by 45, round it off to the nearest whole number, and then multiply it by 45. This will give us the starting angle of our current item, where we will place the highlight image. This way we can rotate the cursor based on mouse movement, and the highlight image will be rotated to completely cover the selected object. Perfect! Now let's change the text at the center to display selected item name. The current item number can be calculated by dividing the cursor angle by 45, and then rounding it off to the nearest whole number. We need the reference to the text, and a string array for the names. And now, we can just set the selected item text by getting the current item from the list. Back to Unity, assign all the variables, and set the item names in the script, and test the project. Everything is working perfectly, however we sometimes get an error for array out of bounds. This is because the angle sometimes goes above 360 or below 0. To fix this, simply add 360 to the angle, and then calculate modulus of angle in 360. Once we have the item number, calculate the modulus of item number in 8. This will make sure that item number is always between 0 and 7. And there we go, the error is gone. The next thing we want to do in the ping menu is, make no items be selected by default. For this create a new boolean called is mouse moved, when the ping menu is opened, set this boolean to false. If this boolean is true, run the code we wrote for angle calculations. 
If the boolean is false, we are going to run a similar code, which will run only when the mouse is first moved. Here, instead of moving the cursor smoothly to the new angle, we will set it directly to the angle of mouse move direction. After this set the boolean to true. Add reference variables for cursor and highlight images, and set them as inactive when the ping menu is opened, and when the mouse is moved enable these images. Let's test our code. And there we go, the select cursor is inactive by default, and when we move the mouse the cursor and highlight shows up. Next, when the ping menu is open, let's disable the script which makes the camera rotate. We simply need a reference for this script, disable it on mouse wheel down, and re-enable it on mouse wheel up. The last thing we want to do is, place the ping object in the scene where the player is pointing. For this we will ray cast from the camera center, in the forward direction. We need reference variables for, player camera, layer mask for ray casting, the root ping object, and the ping items from which we will activate the current item. And now, when mouse wheel is released, we can check if the user made a selection. For this set select an item number to minus 1 when mouse wheel is pressed. If selected item is not minus 1 when mouse wheel is released, enable the ping object. Disable all ping items except the selected item. Raycast in front of the player camera. And if the ray hits something, run this code, and set the position of the ping object to the point where the ray hit. Back to Unity assign all the variables, set the layer mask for ray casting. And run the project. There we go, everything is now ready. Let's add some final touches. Lower the position of the ping as it appears too high. And let's add an animation for when the ping wheel opens. And all done! We have a fancy looking, fully functional ping menu in our game. That's it for ping wheel implementation. If you like the video make sure to like and subscribe for more useful Unity videos.